All right, so let's talk about information economics. One key concept, externalities. So what is an externality? Externality is uh, the impact of a transaction on a user not involved in that transaction. Okay? So what do I mean by that? So there's negative externalities. For instance, when you put up a coal plant or when you put up a nuclear plant, right? So folks who, you know, I may decide, look, I'm going to consume 100% solar, but if there's a coal plant 60 miles down the road, uh, all that pollution is going to affect me. It's going to affect my water, my air, my health, right? That is a negative externality. When a nuclear plant goes boom, that's a negative externality, right? I mean, look at Fukushima, uh, Daiichi. They're still paying the price, and they are going to pay the price for the next 10,000 years, right? That's a negative externality. Even for those who did not buy electricity from that nuclear plant. Does that make sense? Okay, so the impact on a user not involved in that transaction. Now, what's a positive externality? Positive externality is an investment in education. So some of you are investing in your education. You're gonna go out, you're gonna start a company, or you know, this is going to improve your chances of you know, developing a better product, which means that you know, not only you are going to earn more money, but your team is going to be better off, and your company is going to be better off even though they didn't pay for your education. Does that make sense? That is a positive externality. Your society is better off because you invested in education. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, there are cases when the externality could be positive or negative, as in the case of real estate. If there's a house sold two blocks from you, and they sold it at a you know, price less than uh, six months ago, is that going to affect your house value? Yes. Okay. Now, what if it sold at 10% above the price? It's also going to affect you, right? So in real estate, can have both negative and positive externalities. Yes? Question? Oh, no, I was just pointing at the mirror. Yes, exactly. Now, there's also the concept of network externalities. Right? Now, network effects or network externalities is uh, when the value of the network, of the product, depends on the number of other users who are participating in that network. Okay? Um, when it's a network, the value goes up exponentially. Okay? Now, the cases are, for instance, payment network. So Visa, MasterCard, these are payment networks. Operating systems. The value of Windows or Apple iOS or Android is not in the product itself, but in the network of users, application developers, and so on, and, and, and smartphone developers. That's a network, okay? Um, and in the case of network externalities, the value of the network goes up by n square. It goes up n, where n is the number of users. So if you think of a telephone network, okay, or an email network, or a social network. I mean, imagine Facebook with two users. That's all. How useful is that? Not very. Now, if Facebook goes up to three users, then four, then five, the value to all of you goes up exponentially. Does that make sense? So, 
in the case of the telephone, two telephones, this is the value, one. But if there are five, all these interconnections, it's n squared. And at this point, it's, you know, the value goes up like that. And that's why the value of, that's why Facebook is worth $100 billion. Because the network of users is worth that much. Not because their data centers are worth anything or their software is worth anything. It's because of the users. Does that make sense? And it's because it's a network. Now, network effects are not the same as learning effects. Okay? So, or economies of scale. So, the more cars a company makes, the cheaper they can make them because there are economies of scale. They can buy aluminum or steel cheaper. They can buy supplies cheaper and so on. And they, so the value, the cost per car is going to be smaller. Those are economies of scale. This is not the same as network externalities where the value goes up exponentially. Does that make sense? So there's a big difference between, say, Google search where every search adds to the value of Google search, but not exponentially. It adds incrementally to the value of Google. Whereas every new user on Facebook or Google Plus or LinkedIn adds exponentially to the value of all the other existing users. Does that make sense? Now, did you have a question? Yeah. No one's spending any money there. And if, is it, are we defining it in terms of commonwealth of per capita um, revenue uh, of potential? Or potential. About yeah. Advertising eyes, what is it that defines the It depends the on their business model, right? So that's a good question. So AT the old ATT, right, had 100 million uh, phones in America. That was the network, the telephone network. How did they make money? They made money by leasing you the phone. I mean, isn't that weird? I mean, up until not long ago, you could not own your phone. AT&T, you had to lease it from AT&T. So you leased your phone from AT&T, then you had to pay them to install it, and then you had to pay them for, you know, uh, making phone calls, and then you had to uh, pay them for long distance. So these were all revenue models for AT&T for that network. For Visa, that network, how do they make money for that payment network? They charge 2 to 3% of every transaction, right? So each network has its own revenue model, but the value to Visa, to Facebook, to AT&T goes up exponentially. Does that make sense? Which is not to be confused with revenue model. Okay, revenue potential is more like it, right? Yes. It's a silly idea, but you know, most companies should be going to create this kind of network uh, effect or experience for the customer because there's exponentially more value. Yeah, yeah. So should companies create network effects? So here's the answer. Um, not all product categories have network effects. Like Exactly. So Oracle does have network effects, right? Because it's, it's uh, the more, uh, you know, uh, databases that are out there, the more applications are made for Oracle, the more programmers program for Oracle, the more, you know what I mean? So, so they have network effects. Uh, you know, try and get out of Oracle. You can't. That's why Oracle is such a cash machine. A car company does not have network effects, yes, right? Exactly, and that's the old industrial model where the power was more in the product, right? Uh, in the case of steel, the power was the more mines I own, the more power I have. And that's still the case in oil, right? The more oil wells, the more oil I have, the more power I have, right? But in the case of information economics, 
uh, you know, windows, operating systems, payment networks, and so on. These are networks. And the value goes up exponentially. Uh, does that make sense? So you have to know, depending on the product category, whether there is, you know, in fact, there are network effects. Because this will make all the difference in your strategy. Why? So let me talk about another thing, switching costs. I'm going to come back to this next week when we talk about pricing. Um, so switching costs uh, would be the cost of risk for users to switch to competing offerings. How hard is it for a user to switch, right? Now, high market share does not equal uh, high switching costs. And companies like Netscape paid the price when you know, they didn't realize that having an 80% market share did not mean that there were high switching costs. They were exactly one click away from losing the market to uh, Microsoft, for instance, which they did. And Google with search also realizes that they're one click away from losing their 60 or 70% share of search, right? There are no network effects. Um, so it's the cost to switch to a competing offering. Now, uh, lock-in happens when switching costs are substantial. Subst and substantial depends on the, the category, right? So how easy is it to get out of Windows? Very difficult. That's why Microsoft has made a mint on Windows for 20 years because it's hard to get out, okay? Especially if there are, you know, products that only run on Windows. If you have all your data in Windows and all your products just run on Windows, it's hard to get out, right? It's painful. So Oracle, once you have your Oracle databases, good luck getting out, right? You can't. Uh, so that's what's called lock-in. You're locked in. You're locked in. Now, here is uh, the key thing that we need to get out of this in terms of strategy. Um, so, you know, what I'm saying about, about high market share does not mean uh, high switching costs. Nokia. Nokia has gone in two years from 40% to 10% of the market. Two years, okay, uh, of the smartphone market, which shows you that high market share in the in the cell phone market does not mean uh, high switching costs. And here's what you need to get out of this: network effects virtually guarantee a winner-take-all market. When there are network effects by and large, there will be one winner, period. Uh, and everyone else, second, third, fourth, if they can survive, are going to only take you know, pieces and bits of the, that market, okay? So in the case of operating systems for the PC, game over, Windows 1, right? Uh, you know, Apple almost went bankrupt. Uh, in 97, I mean, they, 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 there was no room for two winners in the operating system market. Financial exchanges, uh, payment systems, you know, there's Visa and MasterCard, and they use basically the same network. Uh, voltage, that's why, you know, in the U.S., for instance, we use 120 volts. In Europe, depending on the country, 220, 240, you can't switch. Once the network, the grid, has been established, it's over, right? Switching costs are, you're locked in, in other words, okay? And in fact, it's so hard to switch that some countries have two different grids. <laughs> I, I kid you not, because you can't swap one grid once it's one, 10 or 120 or 220, 
uh, it's really hard. So basically, uh, if there are network effects, like I said, it virtually guarantees a winner-take-all market. What does that mean for your strategy? What that means is, A, you cannot make a mistake. The, the, the number two is going to lose. Okay? Now, who's number two to Facebook, for instance, in the you know, social networking space? MySpace. MySpace? Is it still alive? <laughs> Ah, is LinkedIn uh, in the same space as Facebook? Hmm? So see, LinkedIn made the, the, the great decision to focus on a different category, right? More of the business usage instead of the social, quote-unquote, usage, right? Uh, and that was a way for them to get out of the, the you know, the... the, the at the time, it was Friendster, I think, the winner in the <laughs> Friendster, and then MySpace, and then boom, right? So Facebook is now using Glassdoor to mimic LinkedIn. Uh, in your opinion, is that a good strategy? What do you think? Glassdoor? I think it's Glassdoor. Never heard of it. Exactly, exactly, right? Is anyone uh, joining anything other than LinkedIn for business? So, have you seen Branch Out? It's on I've seen Branch Out. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I was wrong. It's Branch Out, not LinkedIn. Uh, okay. Uh, Branch Out, I've seen it. I mean, I've seen the... Where would you join it? You have LinkedIn. Exactly, exactly. Do you really... So, in terms of this topic, which is network effects, I think that for the business usage the winner has been LinkedIn. It doesn't mean that they're going to be the winner forever, right? But I think that once you have all your contacts and all, all your information and all that on, in groups on LinkedIn, it's hard to get out, okay? And, and let, let me get back to you. And it proves also the point that it's demand-side economics. The value of LinkedIn is in your data, not in their servers or their software or anything like that, right? Now, if Branch Out or whoever provides a, you know, radically uh, new way of doing things in a way that's 10x what we get from LinkedIn, they have a chance, right? But if all they're doing is mimicking LinkedIn, that's not good enough.